Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise. We're still in our season of prayer, and Mother Amy uh, is going to open us up in prayer before praise and worship. Good morning, everyone. And first, I want to make a little confession because I was so um, out of touch and, you know, really hesitant to pray on yesterday when I was supposed to pray. And then I asked God to touch my heart and my spirit. And so he led me to think about having a rebellious spirit and not, not wanting to do what he wants us to do. So that's actually what I was going to pray about yesterday. And because we were praying about families, we want to rebuke that for our children too so that they won't have a rebellious spirit. And so I'm asking for that for me and for all of you that when we go to God and, and, or we're asked to represent him, that we don't rebel, that we don't turn, and we, do, we are obedient to what he asks us to do. So Reverend Rochelle asked me to pray this morning, so I'm going to pray for all of us. Merciful Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity to come before your throne of grace, Father. And we thank you for your continued love and mercy towards us, even when we are rebellious and we don't know, we don't want to do what you've asked us to do, Father. Father God, we ask for your mercy and your forgiveness, Father. Touch our hearts, touch our spirits. Help us to be the people that you've called us to be. And we can never stop thanking you for all you've already done for us. Let's what we come to you even each day and ask for more and more and more blessings, Father. So, Father, we come now, Father, first asking for mercy and forgiveness, Father. And then, Father, asking that you will continue to bless us and keep us, Father, and counsel us and instruct us and help us to walk in the way that you would have us to go. Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to come together today and to lift up your holy name and to praise you with all of our hearts for what you've already done, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being such a gracious and wonderful God. Thank you for being a forgiving and loving God. And thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith, faith Father. We thank you for who you are, and we lift you up, and we praise your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all thanks and all glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's continue to give God glory in this place. Come on, let's continue to give God glory in this place. Come on, send forth your worship. Send it on up. Come on, musicians, go with me. Come on, continue to worship God. We're coming, some of us are looking and seeing who's coming in the door, but Jesus is already in the room. Come on, let's turn our focus to him right now. Come on, let's turn our focus to him right now. Forget about who's coming in. Let's focus on who's already in the room, amen. And let's give him our glory, for he is worthy. He's a great and mighty God. And we give him our glory with our lips. Come on, he worship him. Come on, let's let it be spiritual exercise that we automatically through automaticity, learn how to lift up our hands, learn how to open up our heart, and allow the Holy Spirit to do what it's already intended to do. We are the resistant one that will have the Holy Spirit turn around and go somewhere else when he wants to enter the room. So God, open up our hearts because we want to see you. We want to see you. We want to experience your glory. So, Father God, open up our hearts. Open up our worship. Let's go ahead and stretch out and receive what God has for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
The simple song that I know we know in the church, great and mighty is our God. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, let's put those hands together and bless him. Come on, turn it up a little bit. I got to hear it. There we go. Let me refresh your memory. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. You sing. Great and mighty is our God. It's our God. He's great. Great and mighty is our God. Let's keep it's it there. One more time. Great and mighty is our God. Is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Is our God. You say. Great and mighty is our God. Come on, do you believe that God, God is great and He great is mighty? Great and mighty is our God. Is our God. Sing this part. Is our God is our God ruler ruler is our God is our God ruler, Come on, how many ruler of us allowing you to God, rule over our lives our God. in this very moment? Ruler, he is a ruler. ruler is our God. Let's try it one more God. time. Ruler 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 is our God is our God ruler ruler is our God is our God. Sing it. Ruler, ruler is our God, it's our God. Ruler, ruler is our God. Come on and sing it out. God. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is our God, is our God. How many love to call his name? Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. Come on, let's do that part one more time. You ought to be excited about the name. Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. Jesus, Jesus is our God. Come on, even in the balcony, go ahead and worship Him.
Oh, give it to our God. Hallelujah. All over the building, Hallelujah. give him your praise. Hallelujah. Give him your worship. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all ready for a groove one more time? Hallelujah. And we sing high. Sing that with me. You are greater than anything. You are greater than anything. And I submit my worship to you, God, because you are greater than anything. Come on, let's change it up. You are bigger. You are bigger. You're strong and mighty. You're bigger than my circumstance. You're bigger than my trials. You're bigger than my problems than anything. Come on, let's give God our worship. You are ruler. Over everything. Come on, aren't you glad that he rules over your life? Let's try this one. You are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You are. You are Alpha and Omega. Come on, if you believe that He is the Alpha and the Omega, put your hands together. If you believe that He is the beginning and the end. Give him your worship. You are Alpha and Omega. And what do you do? We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. this because if he is the alpha and the omega the first thing that i think about and the last thing that i think about i don't know if my worship can be subdued the way that i see it being subdued right now so go ahead and let the holy spirit rule this place let the holy spirit fall fresh upon you you are alpha and omega we worship we worship you come on worship him worship is not coming to me nor do I want it that worship is for a true and living God who woke you up this morning and in spite of your hang-up he continues to bless you our Alpha and Omega we worship
come on from your heart you are worthy to be praised come on and glorify God come on and glorify God come on and glorify him in this place hallelujah hallelujah glory to his name all the glory all the glory all the glory have given you all the praise and all the glory that you deserve oh we thank you Lord we thank you this morning thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit for coming into this place and being in our presence thank you Lord for showing your glory this morning now, Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace and mercy. In fact, we come to the mercy seat because we need mercy. We come this morning, Lord, to give you glory and to give you honor and to give you praise. Not because of all the things you've done for us, but because of who you are. Lord, I, I can't help but think about how you took chaos and create an order. I can't think about, can't stop thinking about how you took dusk and created us in your image. I can't stop thinking about how you hung the stars and put the universe on its axis. That you put a moon and a sun in place. And then you put oxygen on this thing called earth that we might be able to live. 
and live in your abundance. I can't think about how you were the father of Abraham. Woo! And how you made your promises to him. And you said that you would create more people than even the seas, the sand and the sea. And that you would bless them if they would only abide in you. I can't stop thinking about God. How you put that plan in place. Because you knew Adam and Eve were going to mess up in the garden. And you put a plan of salvation in place for just us. And for God and for no other reasons we have to say thank you for that. Then God you woke us up this morning. You didn't have to do that. But you saw fit that you would wake these people up this morning. And woke us up God in our right mind or at least in a mind that wanted to come and worship you. Oh, we're thankful for that this morning, Lord God. Most of us dressed ourselves. We even had choices in our closets to decide what we wanted to put on. Didn't have to be that way, God. But you saw fit to take care of us. Because your word says that you, would, if you took care of those lilies in the fields and the birds and things, you were going to certainly take care of your people. You are faithful, God. So we just come this morning to say thank you. Food in our refrigerators. Some of us are pathetic. We actually throw food away. And you got people that are hungry. We ask God that you would forgive us for our arrogance. For not being able to see what we is right in front of us. We ask God that you would forgive us for the sharpness that we speak to other people when we're in a hurry and we're on our own agenda. I ask that personal forgiveness for myself, Lord. Because sometimes we're sharp with other people when we want to get our way. We ask God that you would forgive us. We ask God that you would forgive us because you know what? We didn't all get up this morning. All of us didn't get up this morning and just say thank you for keeping us. Now God, there's some people in here today that got some trouble. Some of them got more month than money. Some of them got health challenges and are waiting for the doctors to talk to them. Some of them got loved ones that are waiting for an attorney and don't have any money to pay an attorney and a loved one is in trouble. We got some people in here, God, that are broken and not speaking to each other, not speaking to somebody in their own household. So God, this morning we ask that you would break those chains and break those yokes that keep us in bondage. We got people in here that are grieving loved ones, Lord God. Some of them, the grief is new, and some of them, the grief has been long going on for a long, long time. We ask this morning, Lord, that we would be able to let all of that clutter come out of our minds for just a second, that we might be able to focus our attention on you. We thank you, God, for clearing our minds of all of the foolish things that we think about. We ask God right now that we would empty ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, that you would come not only and show your glory in the building, but you would show your glory inside of us. And when the preacher preaches this morning, Lord God, we're asking you to bless somebody, either on the airways or in this building, that might come to know you in the pardoning of their sins. You're a deliverer. So we look for deliverance this morning. You're a healer. So we look for healing this morning, Lord God, of our broken hearts and our broken spirits. Help us, God, to leave this place different than what we came. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Sing through the choir. Minister through the prayer stations and preach through your preacher, Lord, that somebody might hear a word of encouragement, that somebody might be delivered, and that somebody will leave here knowing that their eternity will be spent with you. And when you've done it, God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. We won't think it's that we did anything so special but it'll be because of you and your love for us. Now have your way, Holy Spirit, for you are welcomed in this place. 
And we pray this prayer, oh God, in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, our elder brother, the one who came into this mean old world for people such as myself, who died willingly on a cross, who never said a mumbling word, then ascended into heaven, that is pleading our case right now. In that Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you.
what I do. It's what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those who are able, if you will stand for the reading of the word, I'm reading from John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. That's John chapter 6, verses 51 through 58 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And it says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. The word of God for the people of God. All blessings unto God. You may be seated. Amen. Bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and bless God. Amen. Um, I usually don't do this part, but I'm doing it today. We welcome you to Ward African Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful to be in his house one more time. And I, it's my duty to um, acknowledge any visitors who may be visiting us for the first time today. If you are visiting for the first time, we ask if you would just please stand that we may acknowledge your presence. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking privilege. This is one of my homeboys from back since the eighth grade. Um, He's here, seventh grade, amen. Uh, we played ball together. We ran the streets together. He's one of my good friends, Dart Stamps, and his girl, Doris, right? Amen. I just met her last at our 40-year reunion, so I, I just wanted to make sure I got the name right. Um, any other first-time visitors with us today, please stand that we may acknowledge your presence. Please stand. Dart and Doris, we know you had a lot of choices. We are so glad that you decided to come and worship with us here at Ward African Methodist Episcopal Church. If you are worshiping online for the first time, whether it is through our live stream on our website or on Facebook, we ask that if you would please put your information in the comments section that we may acknowledge you from our church office. Ushers, I'm going to ask if you can give visitor cards to our visitors. And so, Ward family, let us stand. Let us greet each other. Greet our visitors. Greet each other in the joy of Jesus the Christ.
together. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, if you believe it, put your hands together and bless God. Amen. Amen. That's why as the praise team sang that we owe him all the praise. Amen. It, it, is, it is nothing that we um, just give because we give. We owe it to God. Amen. Amen. You owe God praise. God has blessed you so much, and we look over the many manifold blessings that God gives us on a daily basis, and so we owe God praise. Amen. I, I think um, it was Richard Smallwood that said in the song that praise waiteth for thee. Amen. Our God, God waits for our praise. That is how much 
God has done for us, which is why the theme of the year is to remind us whenever we can think about anything God has done for us. Whenever you think about something God has done, that is the time to pause whatever you're doing and to lift up holy hands and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Sometimes when I hear the door close, the front door close, and my kids come home, I just say, thank you, Lord. Sometimes when I didn't feel like driving up the 60 and I make it home safe, tired and worn out, Sister Cook, I just say, thank you, Lord. Sometimes when I look in the refrigerator and complain that there's nothing there that I want to eat, I realize that I have something to eat, and I just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Anytime you think of what God has done, we stop and give God praise. I got a witness, right, Mother Washington? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He has done so many things for us. And so we are grateful as we continue to push through this 21 days of prayer. What is today? The 19th? Amen. That means the 18th? Amen. That means we have four more days. Amen. We count today, we count tomorrow, we count Tuesday, and we count Wednesday. Is that right? Amen. And so if you have not joined us, if you could put it up on the monitor, the, the flyer for our prayer. If you have not joined us for these 21 days of prayer, guess what? You got four more days to join us. Amen. And, and I say it often, we want to finish strong. We want to finish strong. And I don't know about you, but I have been um, kind of on pause. Amen. Um, I've kind of been on pause as the, day, as the hours go through the day around five or six. I started thinking, okay, don't fall asleep. Amen. Amen. Don't get into nothing that's going to take you out of the loop of prayer. Amen. Don't don't start watching nothing on TV that that it'll it'll get away from me. I, I kind of guarded this 7:30 hour. Amen. I've kind of I've kind of guarded it in my in my day, in my routine, in my thought because I don't want to let anything or anyone amen somebody anyone prevent me from engaging with God and engaging with God with all of you. And, and it's taught me something about prioritizing God in my life. That if there is a time that I guard, if there's a space in my day that I guard and say, this is my time with God, and I don't want anyone or anything to interfere with that time. I think we push to what Paul says is that higher calling, amen, that, that we have not yet attained, but we press on, amen. That is the mark that we are trying to achieve, this, this engagement, this, this deeper, more intimate relationship with God that is earmarked by priority, by priority saying, God, you are so important to me that I have guarded space in my day to show that you are my priority. And my prayer is that over these 21 days that you have discovered that space, that you have discovered that commitment that it takes to reach that level of intimacy with God. Amen. So we, we push on four more days. Amen. Amen. Turn and tell your neighbor four more days. Turn around and tell the other side and say, hold on. We just got four more days. Amen. And, and, and we are praying together. And it's so wonderful to see so many people on, on, on Zoom. It's, it's wonderful to see. And that was funny Quayley was leading a couple of days ago and he says I need y'all to go I'm going in my prayer closet 
And I need all y'all to mute yourself and go in your prayer closet because if I, if I hear all those amens, I can't focus on what I'm trying to say to God. And I just loved when Quayley said that. He, he said that. He said he don't want to hear all the amens and all the hollering and screaming. He, don't want, he, he said scream, but put yourself on mute so that I don't hear you scream because I'll get off track. That is one who knows oneself and knows what it takes for him to focus and concentrate on God. So I invite you, Ward family, I invite you, those who are watching on virtual, on your virtual space to join us. Um, you don't have to be a member to join us, just join us for the last four days of our 21 days of praying together. We're gonna do something a little different during the altar call hour, I mean, not hour, but altar call space. Um, um, there are prayer stations that are set across, and I'm going to ask Reverend Rochelle to come down and explain those. Uh, but we want to lift up our presiding elder um, in prayer. He lost his aunt, who is like a sister to him. And so we want to lift up presiding elder Lindsay um, in our prayers this week. And um, if you have a prayer request, um, something that is pressing on your heart, um, I just want you to raise your hand that we may look around the sanctuary and we really don't need to know you or what you're going through. The only thing we need to know is that your hand is raised and we will take a look at some of the hands that are close to us in the balcony, over here, over there, the musicians, the praise team. And we just wanna identify a few people that we will pray for this week, amen. You don't have to know them, amen. You don't have to know what they're going through, but you have identified them and you have told yourself that I am going to pray for them this week. Reverend Rochelle will give us our next instruction. For our time of uh, altar call, the altar will be open for whoever wants to come and pray at the altar, but we have four pray, prayer stations um, set up around the sanctuary. Uh, there's one over here at the stewardesses set up right back there. You can see where there are red posters on the wall. And then we have Brother Ernest uh, back there. He has a station where he will be praying. Uh, if you need peace, if you're struggling with peace, amen, <laughs> amen, uh, he will be praying uh, with you. Uh, for God's peace in your life. Over here, where you uh, see in front of the glass window, uh, Reverend Sandra and the Bereavement Ministry set up a prayer station, and they will guide you um, through that prayer station. And then right next to it, um, you'll see a net hanging on the wall. It's a prayer net, and that is a self-guided prayer station just read what's on the paper and you can follow the instructions and when you're done you're welcome to take one of the little crosses from the basket so we'll we'll uh, give about 15 20 minutes I, I'm not sure what it is, but when you get up there, uh, I'm sure they have, with our prayer stations, because last year we had prayer meetings during the month of August, and we had two Wednesdays where we had different prayer stations, and so there's always uh, some guidance once you go to that prayer station. So I hope all of you guys hit up all the prayer stations. Amen. Amen. As we go into it. And so when you're done, if you can either come to the altar or stay in your seat and stay in the spirit of worship, uh, singing along with the music ministry. Amen. So this is not a time to socialize. Amen. This is not a time to catch up with one another. Uh, we will do that after service. So this is a time where we're just trying to do a little something different during service, and we want to focus on prayer. Um, please, the ushers will try to guide us along. Um, um, the ushers may tell you to go a different route to where you're going. Don't get mad at the ushers. Amen. You don't want to take that spirit of anger to your prayer station. 
um, just go on to your prayer station. And as Reverend Rochelle said, when you have hit up the prayer stations, if you'd like to come to the altar, you may, or go back to your seats. But let us stay in the mindset of prayer. If there's somebody you want to pray for or pray with, bring them to the altar with you. Amen. You are, we are now in the directions of the ushers. You may get up and you may go to the various pray, prayer stations as the praise team leads us in song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart.
in the master's room There's healing for your mind Ooh, Your body and your soul Yes, there is Hallelujah God can heal
the people of God say amen. Let the people of God shout glory. Now why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for being the source of our strength and for being the strength of our life. Now why don't you lift up those hands in total praise. Not a half praise, not three quarters praise, but total praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it, it's just an acknowledgement. It's just a recognition that you know where the source of your strength comes from. It, 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 lets, it lets God know that you know that you are his peace. You are the one that keeps us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not lifting your hands for the pastor. You're not lifting your hands for the praise team. You're not lifting your hands for the bishop. You are lifting your hands in total praise of God. Hallelujah. 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 to be praised hallelujah from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same our God is worthy yeah he is hallelujah Hey. 
Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Turn with me in your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Ezra. Old Testament book of Ezra. So if you go to the Psalms, you've gone too far. It's, it's before Psalms. If you know where 1st and 2nd Samuel is, the next books will be 1st and 2nd Kings. Then you'll find 1st and 2nd Chronicles. And then right after 2nd Chronicles is the book of Ezra. Amen. Hallelujah. Book of Ezra, chapter 8, and we're going to lift up verses 21 through 23. Ezra, chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. When you found it, shout, I got it. And it reads, I proclaimed a fast by the river. I'm sorry, I proclaimed a fast by the Ahava River so that we might humble ourselves before God and ask him for a safe journey for us, our dependence and all our possessions. I did this because I was ashamed to ask the king for, for infantry and cavalry to protect us from enemies during the journey. Since we had told him, the hand of our God is gracious to all who seek him, but his fierce anger is against all who abandon him. So we fasted and pleaded with our God about this, and he was receptive to our prayer. Amen. Is that a good text? You may be seated in the presence of God. Pray with me for the next few moments over the sermonic topic, preparing for God's move. Preparing for God's move. Let us pray. God, we are glad that you are the source of our strength and the strength of our life. Because God, we can do nothing without you. We thank you for your presence here. We feel it. And we are grateful. Now fill us with the word, God, that we may ride all week based on your word. So God, as I stand, stand in me. When I open my mouth to speak, God, speak through me. That even though the people may hear Barry's voice, they may hear your voice in my voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Preparing for God's move. Fasting will not force God to do anything. But it will prepare you for anything God wants to do. Fasting will not force God to do anything, but it will prepare you for anything that God wants to do. It's a recent quote that I shared recently that I found on Instagram on the worship blog page. And this was a reality jolt for me, but that's only because I didn't really want to hear or see it at the time that I did. 
But as I sat still for a moment, I was grateful um, because deep down, I already know that when I fast, it's not a method of manipulation that I use to get God to do what I want to do. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want what I want from God, but I have learned on more than one occasion that fasting is a discipline that I practice that draws me closer to God and prepares me for the move of God. It gets me ready spiritually, mentally, and emotionally for God's next move. It is a discipline that cannot exist without prayer. So I felt moved to preach on fasting today as we move to the close of our 21 days of prayer. As I exercise my faith through the discipline of prayer, there are seasons when I include the discipline of fasting. I pray to know God more intimately, to deepen my relationship with him through his son, Jesus the Christ, and I communicate to God all of my feelings, my love and my appreciation to him, what, what I desire God to do within me, what I need from God with thanksgiving. However, there are times, seasons, when I feel pulled by God or when I need something so bad from God that I willingly let go of and sacrifice all that I see, enjoy, and partake of. It is in this action of prayer with fasting that I then prepare myself for what I want and need from God that I can use to glorify him and build his kingdom here on earth. In addition, my fast get me ready for God's answer regarding what I believe I need. And I'm just going to keep it 100. Sometimes what I need from God isn't what God wants me to have. Therefore, fasting prepares me to be satisfied with whatever God gives me through the sufficiency of his grace. This is what happens when we fast. We are setting aside our earthly desires to fix our hearts for God's divine purpose, enabling us to accept God's will, whether it fulfills my expectation or challenges them. The discipline of fasting attaches our hearts and minds to center on God's will, to embrace God's answer, knowing that they will either align with our desires or challenge our expectations. And at the same time, we are shaped and strengthened for God's greater purpose for our lives. So fasting becomes a unique discipline that connects us with God on a different level. We cannot focus on prayer without mentioning fasting, for they go hand in hand. Baker's Encyclopedia of the Bible defines fasting as eating sparingly, or abstaining from food altogether, either from necessity or desire. However, it continues, spiritual fasting entails setting aside activities as well as reducing the intake of food and replacing these activities with the exercises of prayer and preoccupation with spiritual concerns. The New Testament word, which is translated fasting, literally means one who has not eaten or one who is empty. So by fasting, I empty myself of everything that isn't beneficial for my body and my soul. And then I, fulfill, I fill myself with what is, with is, what is spiritual to sustain me. 
Let me say that again. I empty myself of anything that isn't beneficial for my body and my soul, and then I fill myself with what is spiritual to sustain me. Therefore, my understanding according to this definition means that I refrain not only from food, but I also refrain from activity that provides some source of pleasure for me and, st and instead replace that with spiritual matters such as prayer, study, worship, and meditation. This tells me that fasting is even more than I thought it was. It, 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 it's not an intermediate, what is it, intermittent fasting. Where we, where we use it to shed some pounds, amen. It, 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 it's not um, just saying I'm going to skip a meal, but I'm going to um, engulf myself with TV or TikTok or, or these things that, that pleasure me. No, it is the emptying of ourselves from pleasures and desires and filling us with things of the Spirit. This is why. Jesus said when the disciples told him to eat, he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. It is the spiritual matters that fills up the believer. And if you don't real, realize how hefty our worldly appetites are, try fasting from a spiritual perspective. Not just from food from the day for the day, but, but try fasting from the television. Try, try fasting from the, the top 25 music hits. Uh, try, try fasting from social media along with your food. Try, try fasting from your wandering eyes and your wandering thoughts. Try fasting from listening to gossip and spreading gossip. When we practice this, we discover how deep our commitment is to our own independence, our own flesh, our own comfort, and how addicted we are to the approval of others, to the sound of our own voice, and the satisfaction of our own appetites. That's what we discover when we fast. And so in order to get our appetites in check, we fast. We fast because when we're empty, it allows God to fill us with his power and it's difficult for God to fill us with God's power when we are so full of other stuff. It's, it's like um, um, root beer. Amen. I was going to say the other beer, but we're in church. It, it, it's like root beer when you pour it, it, if you pour it too fast, there's foam that will exist in the cup and you think the cup is full, but you let it sit for a while and the foam decreases. When we fast, we are getting rid of that excess foam. That foam is in the, in the worldly things and that foam is in the things of the flesh. And when we fast, we allow that foam to leave the cup so that God can fill us with the good stuff. Amen. And if we are interested in maximizing the potential God has for us, we must fast. It is not an option. If we are concerned enough about our walk or God to move on a specific matter in our life, we must take seriously this discipline of fasting and prayer. We, we're, we're familiar with many texts regarding prayer. Call upon me, Jeremiah says, and I will answer and I will tell you great hidden things that you have not known. We know Matthew says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. But there are also many texts that specifically direct us to fast. So in Exodus it says here, so, so he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant 
the Ten Commandments. Notice the Ten Commandments that Moses wrote did not come to him until after he fasted and prayed. It was after he was empty that God gave him something to write down. Amen. Joel says, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land of the house of the Lord our God and cry out to the Lord. That's what we've been doing the last 21 days, calling the elders, the leaders, and all the inhabitants of God's, of the body of Christ, and we have been crying out to the Lord. And the book of Ezra is about spiritual restoration hallelujah sometime somebody it's about spiritual repair it's about fixing what was broken in our spiritual lives and Ezra the priest who leads the second group of exiles back to Israel proclaimed a fast because he needed guidance during the crisis moment the Jews had been in captivity because of their rebellion and God was ready to send the captives back home to the promised land. I'm so glad that in our spiritual rebellion there is a season in the life of the believer when God is ready to restore the relationship that was broken between us and him because of our sin. I'm so glad that when the church goes left or the church goes right if the church would just repent and turn from their wicked ways and seek his face the Lord will hear from us and so Ward as we move towards our spiritual repair personally and as a church let us learn these lessons on fasting that Ezra teaches us what we learn in the text is that fasting cultivates humility nothing cultivates humility in our hearts like fasting I cannot create true humility within myself unless I fast I can't do it by my will I can't do it by my might or my strength I cannot cultivate humility in my heart by saying I'm humble or I want to be humble uh, humility is a condition of lowliness or affliction in which one experiences a loss of power and prestige when you are humble you submit yourself to the authority of somebody else and humility is considered a proper attitude of humanity towards the creator that's why we lift up our hands in total praise to God because we are humbling ourselves before the one who created us out of dust hallelujah now Tim Keller describes humility not as one thinking less of oneself, but thinking of oneself less. And so it's not saying you think that you ain't nothing, it's that you don't even think about yourself because you are so busy thinking about God. And this is what fasting teaches us. This is a critical virtue that is difficult to obtain if you just listen to our conversations and our input to things many times is what we feel it's what we think it's not it's, it's what we want or what we would have done instead of what God's word says we put too much value in our thoughts and in our experience and what we have to give but humility is going to the word of God and lifting up what God says and falling under that authority humility positions us in complete submission to God and to God's will for our lives. 
So when I fast, this discipline strips away the layers of self-reliance, of pride, and of ego, leaving me face to face with a deep desire of God. And I knew it was going to be quiet when I talked about humility. I, I, I knew it. I have it, written, I have it written here. It's going to be quiet. So, so preach through the quietness because we think too much of ourselves. We, we don't like the idea of us not having any say. We don't, we don't like the idea of nobody paying attention to what we have to say. We don't like the idea of going to the word instead of to my resume or to my CV because we hold that higher than what God's word says. But you empty yourself and that is where true humility begins because when I'm empty God can then pour into me without having to deal with all the other stuff that is usually within me Peter says humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time casting all of our cares upon him. Notice it's Peter who says it. Peter says, humble yourself. Peter who, who knew too much and walked on water. Peter who said he wasn't going to deny Jesus but denied him three times cussing out a sister on the way. Peter is the one who says fasting positions us in humility before God's almighty hand. That is why fasting is so difficult. Newsflash. Breaking news. If you think fasting is easy, either you haven't really focused on the true discipline of fasting or you need to extend your fast because fasting is hard. Anytime you do not feed your physical body, it will be difficult. Anytime that you don't eat for, if you miss a meal, amen. What does it say? Um, what was that commercial with the Snickers, amen, that, that, that you missed a meal and what was it? Hangry, amen, you, you hangry because you missed a meal. Try missing a meal or two and see how that love thing works with you. See, see how that forgiveness thing works. Try missing a meal or two and see how your attitude is and, and, and see how cranky you will become because fasting, uh, uh, it, humi it humiliates you and it destroys the us in us. Philippians says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others more important than yourself. Goes on to say, adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied, humbled himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. So here is Jesus in all of his glory, in all of his authority. Because of the will of God, did not consider it robbery to be considered equal with God. But for you and for me and for the sake of humanity, he came down 40 and two generations and humbled himself from heaven and came down and took the form of a servant. That is humility. Amen. And so what fasting teaches us, church, is to humble ourselves. And the next thing fasting teaches us is to anchor our trust. When, when humility is cultivated in our hearts, we are pushed to a place where our trust needs to be anchored. 
When I'm out there empty, I need something to grasp hold of because I'm so used to holding on to myself that I have nothing to hang my anchor on. Therefore, let us anchor our trust in God. When stripped of self-reliance, emptied of pride, I now realize how much my faith needs to be anchored in God and God alone. Fasting is a tangible expression of our dependency on God. It anchors our trust. That's what fasting does. It anchors our trust. It attaches me to the one who will provide my every need. It teaches me to depend on God to depend on God's provision. Whenever God sends it, I'll take it. To depend on God's guidance. Wherever God guides me, I will go. To depend on God's direction. Wherever he leads me, I will follow. And to depend on that in ways that I have never imagined. The Hebrew writer says we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. The text tells us that Ezra wanted to verify a safe journey for those coming out of exile and didn't want to ask the king because he was already bragging to the king about his God. He was saying the, the God that I serve will protect me. And then Ezra got himself out there and he was feeling some kind of way and he didn't want to go back to the king because he was embarrassed because God had not come through for him yet. But Ezra just depended on God. He said, whenever God shows up, that's when God will show up and I will be satisfied whether God shows up today or tomorrow. If he don't show up tomorrow, I'll be satisfied. If God shows up next week, if he doesn't show up next week, I'll be satisfied. If he shows up next month, if he don't show up next month I'll be satisfied if he shows up next year because I am depending on God to get me through the journey of life how many of you are depending on God to get your children through another school year how many of you are depending on God to get your marriage over the over the tough areas how many of you are depending on God to heal your body It's a dependency. Now, we just finished with the, with, with the Olympics, right? I remember in 1992, Derek Redmond, he was running the 400-meter race. And it was the semifinals. And he, he, he broke out of British. I think he was from British. And he broke out and he started running the 400-meter race. And about halfway through, he pulled a hamstring and he started limping and he was in disgust because he had trained so hard but I don't know if you ever pulled a hamstring but that'll humble you amen he had trained all them years and now he's got to the big race and he pulled this hamstring but he said he was going to finish the race and he started hobbling and, and limping on as the other runners ran the race and made it to the finish line he was going to run that race anyway in pain crying he was going to run that race because he had worked too hard running them laps running them bleachers stretching running them miles he gonna finish this race but it got so hard for him that he couldn't go any longer and then all of a sudden his father came out of the stands and he wrapped his arms around him and he said if you depend on me uh, I'm gonna get you through this race Wrap your arms around me uh, as I wrap my arms around you uh, and I'm going to carry you to the finish line. Church, come here. Don't you know as you run this journey of life, there will be times where you'll be crying. There'll be times where you'll come up lame. But if you depend on the almighty God, God will wrap his hands around you uh, and he'll carry you uh, to the finish line. That's why the Hebrew writer says, therefore, since we have such a large cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us and let's run with endurance the race that is set before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. 
depend on the Lord. So that's what fasting does. And I'm done. I'm done. That's what fasting does. It cultivates humility. Then after humility is cultivated, it anchors our trust. The last thing it does, it sharpens our spiritual awareness. When you're anchored, when you're anchored in God, you'll find that fasting sharpens your spiritual awareness. You're able to discern God's will more clearly. And it's not that you understand God anymore, but you're more sensitive and aware of God as God prepares the next move. Have you, have you ever been in a space where you didn't know why you was doing things a certain way? Uh, have, you, have you ever been in, in the space when, when God just seems to be pulling you in a certain direction and, and you can't figure out, I can't figure out why that, that's because your spiritual awareness has been sharpened. <laughs> and when you fast in humility and are anchored um, you, you, and quiet the noise of the world and regulate yourselves to the voice of God, you'll be able to hear more clearly from God. I'm not able to hear and be aware of what God is trying to say if TikTok is in my spiritual timeline all the time. I can't be sensitive to God if they not like us. It's constantly ringing in my ear and in my mind or in my thoughts. I, I can't be sensitive to what God is saying to me if I'm always thinking about the house of the dragon or the, or the last series I'm watching. But, but fasting positions me because it humbles me. It anchors me. And now the text tells me that I am now receptive God is receptive to our prayers. And more than that, we are prepared for whatever God has for us. That's why I'm so glad when I look in the Old Testament and I see when David fasted after the sin of Bathsheba and he fasted for days not wanting for the Lord to take his child. And after he fasted, the Lord took the child and then he got up he washed his face he ate dinner and Bathsheba was like how can you sit there and eat dinner and the Lord done took our child it's because he fasted and she didn't <laughs> it's because he sought the Lord and she was busy complaining that whatever God has in store fasting prepares you for it and I love that because it doesn't mean I need to be perfect when I fast because the consequences of what he was fasting for was based on his sin now I'm not inviting you to sin but I'm so glad that my sin doesn't prevent me from going to God in fasting as a matter of fact I need to fast a little bit more about my sin because if I fasted more about my sin maybe I wouldn't sin so much hallelujah all I know is that I'm so glad that God loves me I'm so glad that God keeps me I'm so glad that God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies I'm so glad that my sin doesn't keep me from God. That's why the songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace. We often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. Say yeah. Say yeah.
last verse says, Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I hear y'all playing something else and I see Keith up there. So we're going to ride with Keith. Amen. We're going to ride with Keith as we open the doors of the church. We want to offer Jesus to somebody here today. That if you don't know Jesus while Keith sings, amen, you can come on down and give your life to Jesus. And also, if you're not a member of Ward, we would love for you to be a member. We would be that much closer to a perfect church if you would decide to fellowship with us. Even if you fellowship virtually, if you want to accept Christ, you can text accept Christ Though to that number. And if you want to join, text join to that number. Come on, Keith. Is there one? And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Is there one? Still that hope that Is there lies one? within is reassured. Young or old? Visitor As I or member, if you want to accept Christ or you want to join the church, I know come on down. Me safely to that blessed place He has prepared. But if the storm. Sticks by 
tell them. I can't stand you, Keith. Amen. I'm going to put you in that list with Charles every time y'all sing. Amen. I can't stand singing brothers. Amen. Amen. They, they, I'd, I'd still be singing if I could sing. Amen. But let's bless God by putting our hands together and giving him praise. Amen. We're going to continue in the spirit of worship by giving. Okay, that, 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 okay, y'all must, my mic must be off. Let me say it again. We're going to continue in the spirit of worship by giving our tithes and offerings. Amen. If you need an envelope, the ushers are in the aisles with an envelope. We'll hand them to you. Or you can go to Givelify, Zelle, PayPal. You can scan that QR code and it'll take you to our page where you can give electronically if you choose. Amen. We are now in the hands of the ushers.
bless the offering. God, we thank you because we know that all blessings come from you. We thank you for the gifts that have been given here in your house. We lift them up to you. We ask you to please put your hand on them, bless them, multiply them, give us wisdom on how to use them and the courage to do so for kingdom building. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may remain on your seats, stand, you may remain on your feet for the benediction. The only announcement is that continue in prayer these next four days, amen, 7.30. Secondly, we'll have a church conference on, on the 31st of August, that's a Saturday, at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock a.m., church conference, church conference, the 31st of this month um, at 11 o'clock a.m. Please be present. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. humbles us, fasting anchors us in God, and fasting sharpens our spiritual awareness. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen.